Hello again, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for Monday's edition of Alaska Weather. I'm Dave Percy. Up on the uh, hazardous weather chart uh, today, what was a wind advisory yesterday is now a high wind warning out for the uh, uh, central eastern Alaska range. That's out until 7 p.m. this evening for winds gusting as high as 80 miles per hour through the passes there with uh, and that's out until 7 p.m., which time winds should start coming down after that this evening, especially after midnight, probably even dropping below advisory levels uh, by tomorrow morning. So moving on to the fire danger chart here, we've got a few areas of high fire danger with uh, a couple of them have even a small area of extreme in them, like uh, the one over here by Tanana. We've got one in around the greater Fairbanks area, high fire danger up there over towards uh, roughly around Eagle and then the Yukon River there and over the uh, just north of the Alaska range, Token Northway in those areas also sort of in the high fire danger category now. Otherwise, none. Pretty good out to the west, north, and the panhandle. On the satellite imagery today, here's the uh, system, the next one that developed and it rolled right up to the north in the strong southerly jet here for, that's actually pulling moisture up all the way from Hawaii. That's brought all the uh, heavy rain, pretty heavy rains here on the so south coast of the Kenai Peninsula, 24-hour amounts anywhere from two to five inches falling there. That's tapering off this afternoon as you can see the front pushing eastward and weakening and also the bulk of the moisture now to the north with some clearing down to the south. So uh, really tapering off this afternoon as far as rainfall goes here from south central Alaska all the way down to the Kenai Peninsula. Still an uh, area of pretty good rainfall this afternoon or today through this afternoon over toward Cordova, where they picked up another inch and a half during the day today there. While uh, back to the west here, the flow coming around with the low produced half an inch of rain at Iliamna and uh, some rainfall amounts uh, tenth to uh, two third or a tenth to about three tenths, maybe four tenths of an inch falling across the southwest interior here, pushing northward. Nikolai and McGrath, for example, had a third of an inch of precipitation. And wind-wise, uh, pretty good winds, strong winds. Again, of course, along the Alaska Range, those gusts 80 miles an hour occurring. But uh, Kulkana seeing gusts uh, kicking up to 55 miles an hour during the afternoon today, here just ahead of that uh, frontal boundary there. Palmer seeing southeast winds gusting to 35 miles an hour. And uh, also uh, some pretty good gusts. Uh, north of the Alaska range there. Salsa seeing gusts 45 to 50 miles an hour. And then, of course, back to the northwest there. Looks uh, pretty good up here from the Seward Peninsula to the western Arctic coast, north slope, especially Kivalina to Point Hope. But there was uh, some pretty good low clouds and fog there on the Ar Arctic coast, uh, anywhere from Point Lay to Barrow. Not everywhere had it, but it was in areas. And then really pretty storm free out here over the Bering Sea are a couple of troughs here embedded in the flow that uh, only produce uh, the lower clouds, fog, drizzle, maybe some light rain, and that's about it. We've got uh, light rain and showers today, the Alaska Peninsula areas. Uh, of course, the heaviest rain occurring along the North Gulf Coast, and this whole front weakening now, again, narrow area of uh, moderate rainfall right now going around the Cordova area. Some of that getting up into the uh, coast range there of the Copper River Basin, and then rain again back on the southern slopes of the uh, central and western Alaska range with uh, some showers up across the eastern interior areas, actually extending all the way up to the eastern Arctic coast. Very light, though, and scattered nature <clears throat> back to the southwest here. Southeast coast today, pretty nice. Some sunshine breaking out, low clouds and fog right along the coast, and that will uh, continue tonight. May increase a little bit there push inland a little to a ways over the inside waters, but hopefully this high inland high is strong enough to just keep it from overrunning, keeping the, hopefully it'll keep the marine layer out over the marine areas. And for tonight though, it stays uh, wet. That area of uh, rain rolls back to the west and northwest here. So it looks like a wet night coming out for the Yukon Delta, Norton Sound, and uh, the eastern two thirds of the Seward Peninsula band of moisture all the way up to the eastern Arctic coast and central Brooks Range area, but uh, drier back to the west, still some low clouds and fog. And another trough brings uh, showers into the Kodiak Island area or light rain, fog, drizzle type of conditions or showers. But another, this actually developing into another frontal boundary here with a low center 
just off the chart there to the south and with a south to north flow, we'll see that uh, tracks that system there. The next front develops and the low sort of damps out and troughs out and gets wrapped up into the main low over the southeast bearing. So I'll bring some more rain into Kodiak, not as heavy as what we saw. This front isn't as strong, so the winds won't be as strong and the rain won't be as heavy. But that'll keep it wet and cool and bring some more rain into the North Gulf Coast, Southern Kenai Peninsula, Southern Cook Inlet areas with less of a chance, say from Anchor Point on up to Anchorage Palmer, Eagle River with the uh, downsloping flow. But areas of rain here across the southwest interior, Cuscombe Valley, into mostly the Yukon Delta, scattered showers along the southwest coast. And this band of rain from, uh, oh, just about to St. Lawrence Island, but across the Seward Peninsula, northeast there, all the way to the eastern Arctic coast. Some of that could be in the form of mixed rain and snow, but it'll be pretty light. Otherwise, uh, low clouds, fog, barrow, maybe as far east as Wainwright. Showers here for the eastern Aleutians, dry with low clouds, fog, maybe some sunshine in central and western Aleutian areas. Also some fog, pretty likely there for St. Lawrence Island. And the outlook for Wednesday, showers up here over the northwest, uh, scattered showers with uh, that trough, scattered sunshine here over the eastern central interior. But that front kind of elongating, actually the original one washes out, another one forms. Pretty weak though, periods of light rain ending for Kodiak, but uh, kind of a rainy day, light rain at times for the North Gulf Coast. Definitely cloudy, keeping the temperatures down across all of southern Alaska here into Bristol Bay. Isolated showers out over the Aleutians, not much going on out west there. 70s, probably for the highs, central eastern interior. Mostly sunny for the southeast coast there. Temperatures 60s to mid 70s once again. Lows tonight down that way will be in the uh, lower to mid 50s and 40s to lower 50s for South Central Alaska Copper River Basin, North Gulf Coast. Mid 50s for the Central and Eastern Interior, around 50 here or into the upper 40s out toward the coast. Uh, and the Arctic Coast, upper 20s, lower 30s. Same thing for the North Slope. Highs for tomorrow, 70 to 75 here over the Eastern Interior areas and lower 60s. So Sitna Valley and 50s, North Gulf Coast, up into the 70s again for the Southern Panhandle and uh, 40s out over the Aleutians, mid 40s for the Pervilofs, mid 50s for Kodiak Island. And taking out or checking out the lows for Wednesday morning, looks like lower to mid 50s again, warmest down here in the south for the southeast coast, mid 40s Copper River Basin, upper 40s, lower 50s, South Central Alaska Kenai Peninsula to Kodiak Island, lower to mid 40s Alaska Peninsula, 45 to 50 here for areas of the central and upper Tanana Valley, upper Yukon Valley, looking for lows in the mid 50s, upper 20s, lower 30s again for the Arctic coast. And as far as high temperatures go, uh, 70 to 75, maybe 76, 77 up here over the upper Yukon Valley, near 70 into the Koyukuk Valley, Tanana, and mid to upper 60s all the way back into the Kolbuk, maybe Selawik Valley, but 55 forecast high for Kotzebue, mid 30s to lower 40s along the Arctic coast, and in the 70s again for the Panhandle with sunshine. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. First flying weather graphic here showing a lot of IFR, uh, western Aleutians, and then from about Athka over to uh, the Fox Islands here, and up to the southwest coast, Nunavak Island, a narrow strip up to the Bering Strait, and then right there around the Point Hope Cape Lisbourne area. Not too bad for the western central north slope and then marginal VFR down across the Brooks Range. Back to VFR, much of the interior along and south of the Alaska Range. Back into the marginal VFR with IFR here, North Gulf Coast, Prince William Sound, right down along the coastal panhandle. For the afternoon, looking like this, uh, retreating back from the coast a little bit there for the uh, southeast coastline and VFR over the inland areas. IFR still hanging in over uh, the North Gulf Coast, back down across east or western Prince William Sound, Southern Kenai Peninsula, along the Alaska Range here on the southern and eastern slopes. VFR in the interior, marginal VFR of the Brooks Range. IFR now much of the Arctic coast, and that extends down through the Strait to St. Lawrence Island. Lots of IFR out over the western Aleutians and across Adak and Atka to Nikolski, up across the Perbolofs but not quite to Nunavak Island. 
And then for the next morning, that retreats back a little bit, but you can see just widespread IFR back out to the west, marginal VFR up to the coast inland across into northern Bristol Bay and possibly the southern Cuscombe Valley, IFR eastern Beaufort Sea coast, VFR all of the interior areas until you get down to the western Alaska range here, Talkeetna Mountains, North Gulf Coast marginal, Cook Inlet, Kenai Peninsula, Kodiak, all marginal Gulf of Alaska, marginal, marginal VFR right up to the coastline of the Panhandle, IFR along the coast of Prince of Wales Island. And for Anatovic tomorrow, IFR becoming marginal VFR, and Adigan as well trending toward marginal VFR in the afternoon after IFR to start with. Lake Clark and Merrill, IFR on both eastern approaches again, otherwise marginal and rainy, just marginal VFR. And for Windy, marginal VFR here, possible at times on the southern entrance, otherwise looking pretty good. And for Isabel, marginal VFR, Mentasta, marginal VFR, and VFR in the northern entrance with uh, Tanita looks pretty, uh, occasionally, possibly marginal at times throughout the entire day. And for Portage, IFR, eastern entrance to possibly low IFR, otherwise marginal to the west. And Chilkoot and White, VFR. Freezing levels, kind of a cold, cool pool here, centered over the Alaska Peninsula to Unalaska Island, four to 6,000 feet over the southwest, and then sloping down from the Brooks Range at 6,000 feet to 2,000 feet along the central Arctic coast, and much warmer air here, supporting those 70s you're getting over the panhandle, 12,000 feet, 10 to 12,000 foot freezing levels there and not much of a gradient out over the western bearing. For the icing threat, uh, a band here of uh, mostly light rime, possibly a little bit of uh, moderate in there from the eastern Aleutians northward to the St. Lawrence Island and uh, Seward Peninsula in across the Brooks Range and then here over the southern part of the state from the North Gulf Coast, South Central Alaska, just about all of the southwest Cuscombe Valley, Kodiak, Yukon Cuscombe Delta, icing of uh, the light to isolate moderate rime variety, Above 8,000 feet here for the North Gulf Coast, 4,000 feet there for the uh, Southeast Bering and also the Eastern Brooks Range. Jet stream, upper low pressure drifting northward again. Western Bristol Bay, strong jet here coming around, breaking off south to north flow, 100 knots coming into the north, eastern North Gulf Coast areas around this warm upper level ridge here that's uh, controlling much of the panhandle. And for 9,000 feet, good southerly flow continues to pull moisture, clouds, and rain northward to the North Gulf Coast. 25 to 30 knots, uh, 20 knots here eastern North Gulf Coast, 30 knots over the northern Panhandle, but 10 down to the south. Light winds up here to the north and northwest, 30 knots well into the interior, northwesterlies to northerlies, 25 to 30 on the back side, and 3,000 feet. About the same pattern, a little lighter on the winds, 15 to 25 here coming up to the North Gulf Coast, Kodiak Island and uh, 20 knots up here with the northeast interior. Pretty light for the Arctic coast and northwest up to 25 here coming into the central Aleutians. And very light winds here across the pan, it'll maybe 20 knots in towards Yakutat, turbulence wise. Light to isolate, moderate chop, low 4,000 feet. Eastern interior areas, the Alaska Range, Cuscoma Valley up into the northern or southern upper Yukon Valley and also out here over the central and eastern Aleutians as well as St. Lawrence Island. Technology. It's the rhythm of our everyday life. We're more dependent on satellite and communication systems than at any other time in history. Disruptions can affect our economy and even our safety. To prepare for the effects of such events and minimize impacts, we need to look outside our atmosphere, some 93 million miles away, at a star we call the Sun. It's our main energy source. It warms the Earth and grows our food. While the Sun and the space between may seem pleasant from our perspective, it's anything but peaceful. At its surface exists a chaotic state of eruptions and radiation. And unlike Vegas, what happens at the sun doesn't stay at the sun. Space weather is essentially emissions from the sun 
uh, radiation, magnetic field that erupts from the solar surface, pumped out into space, sometimes right towards the Earth. When it impacts the Earth, it impacts our technology. That's what we call space weather. These solar events and their effects at Earth can disrupt systems we take for granted. From causing blackouts to the power grid, to delaying offshore drilling operations due to inaccurate GPS data. Interference with communication systems can force air traffic to reroute and impact rescue response and coordination. Outside our atmosphere, solar radiation can harm astronauts and the systems they depend on. The good news is that these eruptions can be detected early. Forecasters at the NOAA Space Weather Prediction Center in Boulder, Colorado, have their eyes on the sun at all times. The Space Weather Prediction Center is part of the National Weather Service and is very much like a normal weather forecast office. We're here 24 hours a day, seven days a week. We're looking at data, we're looking at imagery, we're looking at model outputs. As conditions develop, we put out alerts, warnings, and watches of imminent activity to our customers so they can take action. In many ways, forecasting space weather is a lot like forecasting hurricanes. Those who rely on space weather forecasts, like electric power grid managers, are informed early on and can begin taking protective action. When we see an eruption on the sun, space weather forecasters will issue a watch. This is much like a hurricane watch. When a hurricane sits offshore of Miami, for example, perhaps 48 hours out, we too can see way in advance that something may be coming towards the Earth. As the storm moves toward us, it hits a monitoring spacecraft orbiting a million miles away from Earth. It's kind of our, our buoy sitting out there offshore and that hurricane about 30, 45 minutes before it makes landfall, we'll get the measurements from the buoy. That's what the spacecraft does for us. That big eruption that left the sun hits the spacecraft. Now we've got the measurements of exactly what's going to impact us here on Earth. And we issue the warnings to give the power grid a heads up that the storm is now imminent. An interesting element to this whole process is that when the forecasters issue the alert, the power grid receives the alert, takes the necessary actions to protect the grid, the average citizen never knows anything ever happened. The number of customers who rely on space weather information continues to grow. As our reliance on technology increases, so will our need for constant monitoring of the sun. Space weather affects technologies. As conditions develop, we put out alerts, warnings, and watches to our customers so they can take action. GPS has changed society. Most people don't realize how remarkable and how many different applications there are. The GPS has become an integral part, not just of our daily lives as far as cell phones and guidance for our cars and mapping, but the whole uh, system in agriculture is really relying heavily on high accuracy GPS. So they're using GPS to plant those seeds with centimeter accuracy. And then they can come behind it and, and irrigate and fertilize right where that seed is with that one centimeter accuracy. The GPS creates a line for the operator that he can steer along. Or you go to another level and the operator doesn't steer anymore and the tractor has an automatic steering system on it, much like a cruise control on a car. 
except for when I push the button, it doesn't drive a set speed. When I push a button, it stays on a predefined line. You don't even need lights. You can do it at nighttime. You program your GPS, and it's driving that tractor for you. So it's, a, it's huge, and it's changing the way that the farmers farm the fields. Six or seven days out. There's an interest in GPS applications from space weather side because when the sun is eruptive, it causes GPS to falter and in some cases it doesn't work at all. Productivity may suffer to a certain degree in that there's no way that I as a human being can steer as good eight hours a day as a, a GPS system is going to do. It's going to be the same all day long. Some of the other application technologies those are going to be gone. We're not going to have the ability to do good section control on sprayers and planters and fertilizer applicators without GPS. We see a huge growing customer base in so many different industries, so many different sectors now relying on GPS and high precision GPS. All big customers for us. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Welcome back. Uh, today's sea ice analysis uh, showing over the last uh, several days since early June, ice through here has actually come southward somewhat. And northerly winds will continue that trend, pieces breaking off and coming southward. But it'll be fighting the current that's from the south and southwest here coming up from the Bering Strait. And so it'll be kind of a uh, deadlock there. Don't look for a lot, any real further southern drift here to occur over the next several days. And for the uh, winds for the southeast coast, west 10 to northwest 20 here down along the coast of Prince of Wales Island. Inside water, same thing, Clarence Strait northwest at 20, Stevens Pass is north at 10, Lynn Canal south 15, and then south winds 15 for the north coast turning southeast there, and increasing to 25 knots for the extreme eastern north Gulf Coast. And then for Wednesday, northwest 10 to 15, 15 knot winds from the northwest for the entire stretch of the coastline. Sea, six feet, pretty uniform wind and wave pattern coming up there. And northwest 15 also for Clarence Strait, about 10 knots for Stevens Passage. And variable winds become south at 10 in the afternoon for Lynn Canal. Prince William Sound, east winds 10 knots, two foot sea, southeast 15, north Gulf Coast. And then the small crafts farther to the east there. Southeast 15 also for the west side. Barren Islands, southeast 20. Small craft advisories for Kamishak Bay, southeast 25, sea 7 feet. East 20 for Southern Cook Inlet and east 10 for Northern Cook Inlet. Outlook for uh, Wednesday, north to northeast 10 knots for the inlet and Prince William Sound. Light northwest winds at 10. Northwest 10 here, turn northeast at 10 for the eastern north Gulf Coast. Southeast 20 for the Barren Islands, east 20 for Kamishak Bay. Kodiak Island, south to southeast winds, 15 knots with three to 10 foot seas here on the east side of the island. Southwest of uh, Sitkanak, southerlies at 15. And for the Alaska Peninsula, southwest winds, 15 to 20 knots, strongest on the Bering Sea side with uh, five to eight foot seas. Prince William Sound, south, or, I'm sorry, Bristol Bay, south at 15. And for uh, Wednesday, southeast at 10 for Bristol Bay, now we got small craft advisories here for the Bering Sea side of the peninsula, southwest of 25, six foot seas, southwest 20, a little lighter here on the Pacific side, Castle Cape to Sitkanak, south 15, southwest 15 for Kodiak up the east side of the island, Shelkoff Strait, 15 knots. Western Aleutians tomorrow, 15 for the far western zones, pick up to 20 knots here, roughly between Kiska and Amchitka Island, and then northwest 15 to 20 there for Adak and Atka, and uh, west-northwest, 15 to 20 knots for the Fox Islands with those seas running, 5 to 7 feet. Outlook for Wednesday, westerlies at 20 knots here from Adak, all the way over to e the uh, eastern Aleutians there. And seas running 6 to 7 feet. Lighter winds west of Adak, 
out to Shimia, 15 knot winds with four foot seas. Her loss tomorrow, northwest 25, that same forecast good also for St. Matthew Island with those seas six to seven feet. Southeast 25 knots, southeast of Nunavak Island, northeast 20 on the north side, and then those winds increase and turn northerly there as you approach St. Lawrence Island, 30 knots with nine foot seas, but Norton Sound southerly is at 15. Outlook for Wednesday, east at 10 for Norton Sound. Northerly winds coming down a little bit, uh, well, about 10 knots for St. Lawrence Island, north 20 all the way down to Novak Island, east 20 south of the island out Cuscoan Bay, north 15 for the Pervilofs, and north 20 for St. Matthew Island with uh, five foot seas. And for the uh, Chukchi Sea, Wales to uh, Cape Thompson, north 30 knots, small craft advisories all the way up to Cape Beaufort with 25 knot winds, falling back to 20 knots, and then from Point Lay on up, uh, probably down to 10 from the north, all the way over to Demarcation Point. And then for Wednesday, those all become easterly at 10 over to the central coast here. Point Lay pick it up to 20 knots out of the northeast, and then small craft advisories continue from Cape Beaufort all the way down to the strait, north northeast at 25, sea six feet. And for tonight, uh, dry up here, maybe some clearing along the northwest coast, maybe the north slope, uh, possibly even uh, Barrow, maybe. Rain here shifting northward and back to the west with this front, really not much with it here north of the Alaska Range as far as precipitation goes. Those high wind warnings end at 7 p.m. for the eastern Alaska Range. And uh, tomorrow, another sunny day for the Panhandle. Another front develops, brings more lighter rain into the north Gulf Coast and southwest interior. And the outlook for Wednesday, yet another front pushes more light rain up into southern Alaska. <laughs> These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal, pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go fly. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbormaster before you go boating.